according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor and banquets. They devour widows' houses and for the sake of appearance say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. And he calls to his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow is put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. All of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Make excuse. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Suffice to say that we as a people have it pretty good. Now I know that there are struggles in each of our lives. Many of them I know, many of them I know. And they are profound and powerful and life shaping. And I would never say to anyone, your life is perfect, ignore your struggle, get over it, move on. We all face things, difficult things. But in general, overall, in looking at the totality of human existence and our comparison to the rest of the world, we have it pretty good. We have the freedom to which we can thank those veterans and their families who won it and defended it. We are free to gather, free from any kind of governmental persecution. We don't have to hide in secret. We have houses and homes, heated utilities, refrigerators, protection, insurance, clothing, food, people who love us. We have a church built, relatively comfortable pews to sit in, instruments in tune. Through the progress of human ingenuity, the generosity of this community, the saints who have gone before us, the work of those around us, and our own gifts and skills, we really do have it pretty good. I would say maybe even more than pretty good. We can and should come to God in thanksgiving for that and express the love to the true revealer of such things, for God has been very gracious. Again, I say that knowing where people are in the midst of their struggles. The challenge with having it pretty good, the challenge with having it pretty good is that in trusting it all to God and trusting God over all things is quite a lot to chew on. It's quite a step to make. Having it pretty good means that we are surrounded with abundance. And entrusting all of that to God and putting God above all of that and the willingness to give it all up for God is a really big thing to face. But that is in fact what we are called to do as Christians. Regardless of how good or bad it is, ultimately the life of faith leads the believer to trust only in the Lord. And if need be, be willing to give everything up for that trust. Our psalmist tells us, put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to the earth, and in that day their thoughts will perish. Put not your trust in rulers, put not your trust in people, put not your trust in things, put your trust in the Lord alone. The readings give us a powerful example of those who are willing to put their complete trust in God. Who have had, in fact, very little and gave it to God, knowing that God could do amazing things with it. First, we have the widow of Zarephath. Elijah, the prophet, traveling through the land during the worst of droughts for God's punishment upon his earth. And Elijah comes to a town called Zarephath, and there, as he enters, 
in the town is a woman in the courtyard collecting sticks. And Elijah asks for a drink of water. And while she's off getting a drink of water for him, she, he asks for a, 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 a bite of food in her hand, in his hand, to eat. The widow of Zarephath tells Elijah that she has nothing prepared and all she has is a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. And she's out there collecting sticks in the courtyard so that she can make a fire to cook a cake so that she and her son can eat and die. She had just enough to feed herself and her son so that they would not die on an empty stomach. They had nothing else. Nothing at all. And in that, the Lord asks for her to give even that little bit. Elijah gives a promise that if she does as she is instructed, that the meal will not run out and the jar will not be empty. Had she refused Elijah, she would have gone and made that cake and cooked it. And she would have eaten it with her son and they both would have died. But because she trusted in the Lord with that little bit, she fed Elijah the prophet. And on the promise that the Lord would provide, God provided three and a half years in the most extreme of drought. That meal never ran out and that oil never went dry. She lived and her son lived because she trusted even with what little she had left. She gave everything over to God, and God responded with life. The widow in the temple, who is in line for the treasury, is yet another example of someone who so trusts in the Lord that she is willing to give everything. She is standing in the line with all of these people who are lined up to give to the temple of treasure. Aren't you glad we don't do that in church? You know, I put a box up here and I'd say, okay, it's time. Come on, everybody get up. I'd stand in the box. Hey, wait, no, no, come back here. We don't do that. But that's how it worked in the temple. And here's Jesus sitting across from the treasury watching these people come in. And here's this widow, and she has two copper coins worth a penny. In the realm of wealth, that meant nothing. Probably more of a bother to the temple financial secretary than anything else. But for her, it was everything. It was all that she had. Which meant she had nothing else. No food, no resources, no neighbors, no food pantry. She could have bartered with those two copper coins and maybe gotten a bite to eat to sustain her for a few more hours. So she, like the widow at Zarephath, could have died with something but she gave up the last of her cup, the last little bit, trusting that God can do more with it than she could on her own. Now, we don't know the end of her story. It would be really nice to think that God sent her her long-lost Persian prince son the next day to take her off to a, a grand mansion outside of the desert where she lived in, in happiness. Maybe that's the case. But what we do know is that this woman, this widow, who gave those two copper coins, received the praise of the Savior. And her action is an example 2,000 years later as recorded in the Holy Book. The last example we have in our readings today of one giving everything is the aforementioned Savior, Jesus himself. The one who would truly give his life in trust of God. Now Jesus knew the promise of resurrection. He told it to his disciples. We heard those stories throughout the lectionary series this summer. But he had to trust that promise completely. Or his sacrifice would have been way too costly. He had to trust that what God said was going to happen actually happened. And when Jesus is nailed to the cross, he goes to that cross with full trust that God will bring back life. A bit of human hesitation in the garden outweighed by immense trust. And that trust was rewarded by a new life. Well, we can say, of course he trusted. 
This is the Word made flesh, come down from heaven. He knows God. He knows what God is going to do. Jesus trusts God because Jesus knows that God fulfills the promise. That if God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And God still speaks promises today. We, my brothers and sisters, are no different in the basis of these examples. We just have many more things to miss. We still hold the same promise. The same God speaks to us. Trust me above all things, and I will give you life. Give over to me all things, for I am the maker of all things. Our challenge is... Our spiritual warfare, sitting here today in the late part of 2018, is that we're not dealing with two copper coins. We're not dealing with a handful of meal. Or even, I dare say, concern for our lives. It is our pretty good that we struggle against. That is our challenge. And that we have it pretty good. We have much more that surrounds us. We have much more that surrounds us that can give us life and point to God. Or can become God's. When was the last time you thought about your electricity? Last time it went out, right? Or last time you had to pay the bill? So many of the pretty goods that we have, we just acknowledge and move through. The fear is being trapped in the anything but thinking. Now some of you should have the meatloaf soundtrack going through your head right now. I would do anything for love, but I would stack any I would sacrifice anything but. For in that, we can sacrifice God and not even realize it. We have it pretty good. And I wouldn't ask anybody to change that, but let us keep our pretty good in perspective. And hold our trust not in stuff or in rulers or even in the self, but in the one who takes so little and makes it so big. Let us keep our trust in the one who feeds with a handful of meal, who immortalizes with the smallest gift of two copper coins, the one who speaks to the grave and says, come out. Let us strive always to put our complete trust in the one who gives life and thus be free from putting our trust in the things that cannot. For all of that which surrounds us and all of that that there is, there is only one who can stand at the grave and say, come out. There is only one that can speak light into darkness. There is only one that breathes life into death. And it is that one that we put our complete trust in. All glory to God on 